Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start the opening session of the 2017 International Insurance Convention. This is transmitted through, through streaming through the webpage of ASECOLDA for all those interested in following the most important moments of the Insurance Convention 2017. From the Bolivar Room of the Hilton Hotel, we are greeting all those uh, that are connected. To open uh, this event, I want to invite Jorge Humberto Botero, Executive President of Asecolda. You have the floor, Mr. Botero. Well, first and foremost, uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, the, all the attendees for the presence, those who are in the room, but uh, those that are in the bar are cannot participate in the drawing of the BMW. I really want to thank you for coming here. I know that uh, we have had uh, uh, air transportation issues, um, so I'm very pleased uh, to have you here. I want to specially greet uh, the Didier Burgos uh, from the um, House of Representatives. Um, he is one of our good uh, friends. Uh, in the Congress, and also to thank Luis Fernando Mejia, who unfortunately had to go back to Bogota, his excellent uh, presentation on the economy and on productivity issues that we have to continue facing. I want to greet Felipe Lega, uh, Julian Alvarez, Director of the Bank of Opportunities, our partner, our partner in so many projects of social interest in the insurance world, to our friend, uh, our insurance superintendent, Oscar Martinez, Jorge Castaño, the financial superintendent, he'll be here shortly. And uh, I want to express my gratitude to Alfonso Gomez uh, Mendez, uh, a, a well-known figure in the world of law and uh, in the Colombian politics, and he'll be the keynote speaker for this uh, opening event, and to express my gratitude to Alberto Carrasquilla, a great uh, former minister of finance, uh, former President Uribe, and um, one of our colleagues, uh, Juan Enrique Bustamante, president of my board of directors, uh, and my uh, my friend in so many struggles, Sandra Solorzano, vice president of our board of directors, all the CEOs of the different insurance companies, and uh, the officers of the different insurance companies who are here with us, uh, and our friends uh, from the media who always cover these events uh, with so much uh, devotion. And to each and every one of you, thank you. In the period between 2012 and 2015, the Colombian economy grew at a rate of 4.6%. A, a high growth during uh, such a long period of time ended up in very positive social results. Poverty went from 50% of the population to 28%, uh, and uh, the middle class went from uh, representing 60% of the population to 31%. Uh, and I was talking uh, to Alfonso about this, the vulnerable population, given, situ uh, given a severe deterioration of the economy, even though it has dropped, it still represents almost 40% of the population. The vulnerable population, the main challenge is uh, for this group uh, to uh, fall into poverty again. But these results were seen in many countries of the region. They, as we did, um, manage the macroeconomic policy in a, in a prudent manner, and we all 
took uh, or made good use um, of, uh, of, uh, of the tailwind uh, of an economy that was growing because of the demand uh, of the Chinese economy. The problem, my friend, is that those uh, favorable conditions are no longer there. Colombian exports dropped. Uh, in half in a in a short period of time, uh, creating a severe adjustment in the balance in the balance of payment, fiscal accounts, and uh, the exchange rate, mainly because of the impact of last year's drought. For the first time in many years, inflation grew uh, above uh, the path defined by the monetary authority. Fortunately. The vessel is no longer in turbulent waters thanks to the coordinated efforts of the government and of the Central Bank of Colombia, as was mentioned by Luis Fernando Mejia in his presentation. The problem now is different. Uh, we are in, uh, navigating very slowly. It will be too much for the economy to grow this year at a rate of 2%. Uh, the projections for coming years are not better than that. In order to recover the high growth uh, path uh, and improvements in social well-being, we need to overcome two uh, main problems. Uh, the first one uh, is to uh, preserve oil self-sufficiency within a context of low price. According to the General Controller's Office, if we maintain the current dynamic of the losses of proven reserves by 2021, we'll need to import oils in the growing amounts. So the, high, the country will go back to a situation that it experienced during the last century. The chronic scarcity of resources in foreign currency to finance exports of raw material and capital goods. The second the main challenge was mentioned by Luis Fernando in his presentation is the low productivity of the national work. One data shows uh, the size of the problem. The labor productivity of a Colombian worker is in average 23% of uh, the uh, our productivity of uh, a worker in the U.S. Consequently, and with the exception of those countries in which we have sound competitive advantages, as is the case of flowers, we have severe difficulties to compete uh, in internal and export markets. Uh, to improve productivity needs to be a paradigm that will gear the actions of the current administration and hence uh, of the coming administration administration, the portfolio of necessary measures to overcome uh, the, this issue uh, has to do with uh, regulations, uh, for example, to solve uh, uh, the uh, legal insecurity, um, uh, also a labor informality, which is a scorch that affects a high percentage of the occupied population. Is fair. It is fair to recognize uh, the achievements of the current administration, mainly in the last two fields. Uh, we hope that the uh, difficulties in the ambitious infrastructure agenda will be sorted out soon. Once again, uh, I would like to mention that the, that the national insurance industry, together with the important group of uh, reinsurance companies that serve the Colombian market, are ready to continue offering uh, the coverages that are necessary in the different uh, phases of infrastructure projects. To put it in simple words, uh, the country must uh, work on two social bombs that are very dangerous. Uh, first, uh, the, capacity, uh, uh, the capacity of the pension system is too low to offer decent pensions to those uh, that become senior citizens. On the other hand, uh, pu uh, public finance imposes the payment of, pen of pensions. Uh, that uh, that are required, and that's a huge amount. Let's recall some figures. At present, only 23% of the population at retirement age receive a pension. The projections indicate uh, that if the problem is not sorted out by 2050, only 19% of Colombians uh, will have access uh, to a pension. Fiscal cost uh, of the pension system, which is the other dimension 
one of the bomb are just huge and they tend to grow because the depletion of reserves in the pay-as-you-go system forced to cover the pension payments with budgetary income. By 2018, the budget project of the nation allocates 41 trillion pesos for that figure, which is much higher than the items of investment, education, and health. Hence, uh, it is clear that the excessive uh, spending in pensions uh, reduces uh, the capacity to serve other social demands, uh, which are a priority. Through the spending commission established by the national government, we understand that we'll have the milestones ready of a reform that we will analyze thoroughly. On the other hand, we know that the candidates to the presidency of the republic were going to be with us on Friday are interested in preparing themselves to propose a reform that, as usually happens, will give rise to many debates uh, given the ideological passions that, that surround uh, these topics and the circumstances that its benefits are for the long term. However, not the cost that should be assumed by the current uh, generations. We are ready for these discussions uh, that will take place in the coming months. Um, most likely in a very intense manner. Now I would like to refer to road uh, safety. Alberto Carrasquilla touched on that. Uh, this It is uh, a public issue ignored by the country. Economic theory indicates that the existence of mandatory insurance is justified to cover harmful contingencies uh, that could cause on third uh, that could be caused uh, by individuals on third parties, um, and uh, they lack of sufficient resources to cover th to cover those contingencies, whether it is uh, with uh, their own resources or coming from insurance agreements. So there is a market failure that should be sorted out by the, by the regulation. Hence, uh, there is uh, the mandatory accident insurance uh, that covers the expenses resulting uh, from accidents. Um, the reciprocal theories, not that uh, developed regulation failures, um, and those are the ones that have this product in a critical condition. But uh, before pointing them out, it is necessary to understand the magnitude of this issue. Official figures indicate that in 2016, 52,536 victims of uh, traffic accidents uh, with a reduction of 0.3% uh, when compared to the previous years. Uh, these uh, figures are not uh, correct. Uh, the reality is that, according to the data provided by insurance companies, based on the claims they receive in their windows uh, by way of SOAT, uh, the victims were 700,000 uh, during that same period, uh, with an annual increase of 4.8 percent. Uh, this uh, means a difference of 13 to 1, uh, with respect respect to the real figures uh, that are reported in the windows of the insurance sector and those disseminated by the national government. To correct this failure by itself will imply that we, need, we will need a higher degree of awareness with respect uh, to such a problem as that of uh, road uh, accidents. The growing road accident rate is related to the changes um, in the uh, in the uh, vehicle park. Uh, you see that motorcycles account for 87 percent of accidents, and obviously they are more vulnerable than other vehicles. They went from 2.4 to 7.5 million units during the last 10 years. The severeness of road uh, accident rate 
rates says that according to the World Health Organization in Colombia, we have that 16.8 people die per 1,000, um, 100,000 inhabitants. So this is similar to the figures in China, India, Nepal. We must ask ourselves what are other countries of the region doing better, as is the case of Mexico, Chile, and Argentina, that report lower mortality rates uh, and lower uh, accident rates. Well, there is a set of causes that contribute to this result. Uh, which uh, is uh, severe. If there is a lack of uh, security safety policy after the establishment uh, of the um, safety road, road safety agency. It took many years uh, for that agency to become effective. Uh, these delays left the country without a public policy, among other reasons, because part of the knowledge the accrued knowledge was lost. It was part of the um, Fondo de Prevención Vial. Without any doubt, uh, uh, many uh, good uh, attempts uh, were um, conducted by the agency, but this uh, public health, this problem of public health requires structural adoption and to restructure many agencies in the country in order for the country to count uh, on um, highway uh, safety. No matter how effective uh, these agencies are, I mean, they, they're, um, their executions are still not enough. Um, in this inventory of problems, it is worth mentioning the lack of uh, the lack of uh, rigor in the. Um, and the ability of drivers to be stricter in these uh, areas will help having uh, skilled uh, drivers and to reduce the accident rate. For this purpose, it is necessary to strengthen the homologation of driving schools, uh, mainly for motorcycles. It is a simple but necessary task. I mentioned another milestone there, the lack of, con of connectivity between um, uh, the fee and the risk. The SOAT risk is established based on the vehicles. This has no sense whatsoever. You have to link the SOAT insurance fees to the risk generating factors, which is not the vehicle but the driver. We presently have all the technological means and the necessary information to implement this proposal, which would have notable effects in the reduction of accidents, just as proven by the experience of many other countries. If the conduct of each has an effect on the cost of the policy, then we would all have adequate incentives to act with greater prudence. Evasion is very high close to 39% of vehicles on our highways do not have the SOAT. This, of course, affects the finances of the general social security and health because the costs and therefore the cost of victims and highway accidents that imply those who evade payment are covered with the national budget. In 2016, just to give you a figure, FOSIGA paid 163 billion Colombian pesos for this concept. And relative to, to unidentified victims, reducing evasion should be a priority of the public agenda of uh, transit authorities, because this would help to sort of re-enable or the, the, the problems of uh, balance of public finances in, in, in regarding the SOAT. Another important thing in this context is the regulatory differences between SOAT and the general uh, social security system in health. Whereas uh, insurance companies have to pay the IPSs in, 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 within an established term, they're forbidden to request authorization of services and cannot establish service providers with uh, service provision with health providers. The remaining actors in the system do not have these constraints. Consequently, incentives are generated to channel through SOAT 
services uh, different to those related to traffic accidents and at a higher rate than those collected or charged for incidents of a different nature. It is, wouldn't be surprising then to the public who is familiarized with the, this subject, but there are SOAT prices and non-SOAT prices for medications, procedures, and therapies. Clearly, SOAT prices are higher as a result of a defective or of, of a defective regulation. As is normal that it happens, all these problems have very sensitive effects downstream, that is, in the financial results of insurance companies. The results are worrisome. So it shows negative figures in the last four years and closed 2016 with a net loss of 127 billion pesos. And one wonders until when will businessmen continue postponing a legitimate uh, desire for, for revenues and will continue withstanding losses of the size I just mentioned. It is evident that the persistence of this negative behavior puts at risk sustainability of the system. And to avoid it, it is necessary to adopt the previously mentioned reforms, which should be preceded, given by their the urgent nature, the end to guarantee uh, sufficiency of the rates in the field. In the conversations we have had with the financial superintendent, we, we hope that during his presentation at this convention tomorrow, he will share with us the vision he has to resolve this serious situation. I would now like to, in almost in conclusion, to talk about our relations in the insurance uh, sector with public authorities. Given the monitoring and the overseeing of the insurance sector and the different types of coverages, we need to interact with different government entities. With several of them during the last year, we have had very fruitful dialogues with a public interest perspective and stability of the insurance sector. I want to thank Mr. Lega, who's recently assumed a very important position in this. With the financial superintendency, we have been working, among other things, in resolving the problems that affect sustainability of the SOAT, in updating the reserves regime, updating the mortality rates for different types of populations in the use of innovative channels to expand the insurance offered to new populations. The team at the Ministry of Finance listened attentively to our recommendations regarding the tax reform, especially about the most effective way to use part of the resources from this monotributo to generate social protection mechanisms for small businessmen. And it has been attentive to the problems that hinder uh, the functioning of the disability and survival insurance. The Ministry of Health understood the concerns of the sector, also presented at this forum last year, about the exponential growth of the uh, spending of, of the, the payments due to accidents. We, there, there solutions, solutions are being studied to the problems we mentioned then. We tomorrow will be the formal uh, launching of the electronic issuance of SOAT, something that will be replicated in other fields of the insurance activity. In turn, the Ministry of Agriculture and its team have strived to, to maintain abreast the agricultural insurance while Institutions are established that enable its strengthening, especially benefiting the peasant population. Even though the actions and measures I have measured imply strict compliance of the obligations that gravitate around public uh, servants, I want to thank them to, to say what I don't dare rate as a 
serious omission in attending to the responsibilities inherent to the Ministry of Finance. And I'm talking about the lack of regulation of the mechanisms for protecting home purchase, home buyers. No, containing the law known as anti-space submitted by the government itself to, before Congress to prevent what occurred uh, many years ago, that many families lost their lives savings as a result of the collapse of certain buildings and the demolition of others by orders of the authorities. All this due to the negligence of the builder. This law was uh, issued, the deer participated actively in it one year and three months ago. And due to certain reasons, it has not been regulated. Uh, we protested against this before the Ministry of Housing in that if a new episode like that in Medellin happened, the, people, the homeowners would, would be lacking insurance due to a delay in actions by the government and those affected would expect the government to, to pay indemnities. As is known recently in Cartagena, a building collapsed and others had to be evacuated. It happens that in Cartagena, are the cast, not only castles at the beach made of sand, but also homes that are sold to honorable people. Given these omissions that could constitute serious violations of the law, and which pillars are efficiency and morality of public servants, I would like to formally notify that I have filed a complaint before the General Procuraduría of Colombia. This process is underway, as I have been officially informed by the Procurador. And I will conclude with a very brief comment about what I call milestones of the political debate in an essential uh, topic, which is the peace process. The homicide violence that was uh, seen a reduction since 2002 has continued this trend during President Santos's administration. It is evident that the uh, ceasing of, of violence by far can be durable. The, the, the turning of this guerrilla group into a political party seems to definitely close the long cycle of atrocities that this organization has committed. The challenge ahead of us is huge. We are forced to guarantee the lives and security of those who have laid down their weapons and to open spaces so that once they have settled their issues with justice or if, if pardoned by the government, they can leave lawfully. I want to appeal to the businessmen in my sector and the rest to contribute to the generation of livelihood projects and jobs so that former guerrilla members, many of which come from the most vulnerable sectors of rural Colombia can have peace and be at peace. One cannot ignore, on the other hand, that this agreement has created a large division in society. Whereas it's true that we have lived in a 52-year war, ours has been a failed state that is merely recovering its legitimacy thanks to its negotiations with FARC. If we are all guilty, Reconciliation between Colombians will pass through the ceremonies of collective expiation that will be organized by the Truth Commission, Comisión de la Verdad. If we need uh, social validation, as a project by the government says, it should be evident that those who govern are the communities and not the republic's authorities. And we need to see whether the right to protest will be a mechanism to demand the meeting of the rights invoked or to request for the rule of law to operate normally. The government negotiated what it felt was best for our nation. Congress 
is evaluating and modulating. The same is being done by the Constitutional Court. In the last uh, term, Colombian citizens during the elections next year will be able to confirm or correct the direction. Thank you very much.